Hello and welcome back to Ember's Reading Room. Today we are returning to the Little Golden Book series. Today's choice is Little Pussycat, written by Margaret Wise Brown, who apparently writes a lot of golden books and other children's books. And the illustrator doesn't say illustrator, it actually says pictures. Pictures by Leonard Weisgard. Also, this is not an original publication. This was originally published under the title Pussy Willow. And this is called Little Pussycat. I have a strange feeling that this was not the original book that I read because in my head, the book is called Pussy Willow, but it is very clearly called Little Pussycat. And once again, I probably won't be talking much. So now onto the book. Once there was a little pussycat, not much bigger than a pussy willow. He was just as soft and gray and furry as those little flowers clinging to the branches all about him in the early spring. So he named himself Pussy Willow. No parents? It was a wild green world that he was born into. A forest of wild flowers grew above him. Some things were bigger than he was, and some things were smaller than he was. And he wondered at such little things. Suddenly a bug jumped out of that wild green world and up to him. Where are you good to bite? asked the bug. Such a polite bug. It's kind of like Fluttershy going, can, can I, is it okay if I t tie you up? <laughs> Nowhere and not at all, said Pussy Willow. And he rolled the bug back into the grass with his soft fur foot. Bright moonlight nights came down the sky. The peepers were peeping and the tender buds and roots and wild flowers were a gentle smell on the warm night air. Um, what kind of peepers? <laughs> oh, maybe here I'll find out. A little peeper peeped out of the pond. How do you know it's spring? He peeped. The picture's a frog, so I guess a peeper is a frog. I don't, said Pussy Willow. When the groundhog casts his shadow and the small birds sing, and the pussy willows happen and the sun shines warm. And when the peepers peep, then it is spring. And splash, he was gone. That little poem was all in italics. It's probably important. Probably. A deer mouse came softly out of the forest and tickled pussy willow on the nose. Why? <laughs> How odd, she said. A cat not much bigger than a mouse. Little fat shadow, said the mouse. That's not very nice. Come home with me and live in my house. Kerchoo! I am not a shadow. Shadows don't sneeze. Kerchoo! Pussy Willow gave such a big sneeze that it blew the mouse over. This is why you don't tickle a cat on the nose. Kerchoo? Kerchoo. It is spelled out right there. K-E-R-C-H-E-W. I wasn't questioning your pronunciation. I was questioning the kerchoo. What is that called? A uh, automatopoeia? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Time passed. Hours and minutes and nights and days. And Pussy Willow grew more fur. He looked pretty furry to begin with. Wild strawberries bloomed around him. Green grasshoppers hopped over him. Suddenly Pussy Willow looked up. His Pussy Willows were gone. Gone! Long yellow things and little green leaves hung from the branches where his Pussy Willows had been. Where had they gone? He would go and find them, and he would look until he found them again. It's going to be a while. Just a little bit. Because of this book, my parents used to have to buy me pussy willow flowers, but we couldn't have them in a vase in the house. They had to sit on a picnic table in the backyard. I'm still not sure why. <laughs> so off he went, through moonlight and starlight and thunder and lightning. That doesn't sound fun. Looking for his pussy willows. He searched through the day and the night, and the wind and the rain. Also doesn't sound fun. Spring passed, and along came the first butterfly, and bumped bang into Pussy Willow with a soft and certain bang. I didn't know bangs could be certain. And soft. Out of my way, out of my way, said the butterfly. Who, who are you? And what are you looking for? Pussy Willow sat squarely on his tail. Pussy Willows, he said. Did you ever see any gray fur flowers that look just like me? Up in the air, up in the air, said the butterfly. Anything that anyone would look for is up in the air. Okay. 
a butterfly. Hmm. So Pussy Willow climbed a tree and fell asleep in a bird's nest. Whoops. The birds came home and found him warm and purring next to their eggs. So they sat on him, too, and kept him warm. Little friendly birds came out of the eggs and grew up and learned to fly. Everything that anyone would ever look for is up in the sky, they sang, and flew up. Pussy Willow climbed all around the treetops, but he never learned to fly. One day, a bee flew by. Who are you, and where shall I sting you? These are very polite bugs. Quite. Don't, said Pussy Willow. But tell me, did you ever see any gray fur flowers that look just like me? Sassafras, buzzed the bee. Look in the garden. Is he using sassafras as a curse word, or is he actually telling Pussy Willow to go look at sassafras plants? No idea. Me either. So Pussy Willow climbed down into a garden. And there he found cabbages and roses, scarecrows, poppies, and pink tiger lilies. It's an interesting assortment. But no pussy willows. He went up to a big fat cabbage. Did you ever see any little gray fur flowers that look just like me? But the cabbage sat there in its great green silence and never said a word. It's a cabbage. That's the word cabbage patch kids. No. Actually, I don't remember when those came out. This still may have been originally published before those. Also, Pussy Willow was quite young, so... Up popped a mole. Anything that anyone would look for is always in a hole. In a carrot, said the rabbit. In a garden, buzzed the bee. In a smell, sniffed the skunk. And the woodpecker pecked at a tree. Pussy Willow hunted through moonlight and sunlight and down by the sea. There he met an old hermit crab. The hermit crab came snapping out of his shell, waving all his claws. Shh, said the hermit crab. Why do you walk by the sea? Psst, said Pussy Willow. I walk where I please. Did you ever see any gray fur flowers that look just like me? Scuttlefish, snapped the crab. I see that you are a pussycat, and the beach is no place for pussycats, and the sea is full of fish. And if you are looking for flowers, all the beautiful ones are in the sea. Crabby? Also odds bodkins? <laughs> if this beach is no place for pussycats, then how does the hermit crab know that Pussy Willow is a cat? And what does the sea being full of fish have any relevance to the rest of the conversation? Mm -hmm. The hermit crab snapped back into his shell and scuttled off sideways into the deep green water. So Pussy Willow wandered through purple asters and goldenrod and pearly everlasting through blueberries and blackberries and raspberries. But he still couldn't find his lost Pussy Willows. The wind began to blow. The leaves turned red and fell from the trees. Nuts fell on Pussy Willow's head and apples dropped about him with a loud and sudden pop. And no apples popped. Pussy Willow met a red squirrel hiding acorns. Are you a nut? asked the red squirrel. Yeah, I'm just a little bit crazy. <laughs> what do you think? said Pussy Willow. Did you ever see a nut with whiskers and pointed ears and a switching tail? I am a cat looking for Pussy Willows. Did you ever see any little soft gray fur flowers that look just like me? Look under the leaves, said the red squirrel. Everything that anyone would look for is always under the leaves. The air grew colder. Snow fell. Pussy Willow hunted through snowstorms and black branches and across the shining ice. Until at last he fell asleep, a very tired pussycat under a thin branched bush. Pussy Willow took a little cat nap, and while he was asleep, something began to happen on the branches high above him. The sun shone warm, and he dreamed that there was a soft purring in the air around him. The groundhog came out of the ground, and when he saw a little cat in his shadow, thump, get out of my shadow, he said, and woke him up. Then all the birds began to sing. The red-winged blackbird, the meadowlark, and the bobolink whistled in the air. The peepers in the pond began to peep. It was spring. We've been at this all year. Apparently. 
and when Pussy Willow uncurled himself, there were his Pussy Willows, for he had fallen asleep under a Pussy Willow bush, and it had burst into bloom above him. Everything that anyone would ever look for is usually where they left it, hooted the owl. On a bush, sang the robin. In the sky, sang the lark. In a song, in the spring, in the dark. Then up popped Pussy Willow. Everything that anyone would ever look for is usually where they find it, purred Pussy Willow. That's cool, what you think? The illustrations don't quite hold up with my memory. Mm. Pussy Willow isn't quite as beautiful as I recall him to be. Hmm. His eyes seem kind of flat to me. They're a very solid color compared to the detail they put into his fur and stuff. Well, his fur was kind of the detail. Because his fur was just like the fur of the flowers of the Pussy Willow. So, both a lot and not a lot going on in this book. Because it takes place over the course of a year. And Pussy Willow's look actually does change. The earlier pages, he's all very kitten-like. But when you see him curled up in front of the groundhog, he looks much bigger. Especially considering that we know earlier in the book, Pussy Willow is almost the size of a deer mouse. Now here he looks relatively comparable to the groundhog, mm -hmm. which is much larger. Also, his fur looks a bit longer in this sleeping pose. He also did mention that his fur got, I think, bigger? He said he got more fur, which I always thought was an odd way to phrase it. Hmm. Because once cats have their original coat, it hmm. tends to kind of stay. Looks over at our cat. <laughs> yes, very furry. And a little wondering at the overarching lesson here because the owls is rather sensical everything that you would look for is usually where you left it because what do your parents always say when you're looking for something well where was the last place you left it and it's always in the last place you looked yes well that's ted geisel yeah i can also be the last place you looked if you looked there first too it can because you can look in the first place first and then you look there again after you've looked everywhere else and suddenly that time you see it mm-hmm which fits a little bit with Pussy Willow, because he no longer recognized his bush once it lost its flowers. And he did all this traveling, and in the end, he came back to a, the same type of bush. Except the flowers bloomed, and he recognized it. Nice. This has been an Ember's Reading Room rendition of Little Pussycat, written by Margaret Wise Brown, with pictures by Leonard Weisgard from the Little Golden Book series. If you enjoyed this, please check out other Ember's Reading Room entries, subscribe, leave a comment, and check out our other pop culture videos. If you're interested in finding this book, we'll include an Amazon link below if it's still in print. If you would like to help support Ember's Reading Room, please check out the Ebates referral link. If you sign up and make a qualifying purchase, you will get a bonus, I will get a bonus, and I will have no idea what you bought, so no worries. Ebates and Amazon are in no way affiliated or sponsors of Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel.